The other dashboard here showing the customer churn in the bank. There is a filter pane and we click here, we can select different filters and everything works perfectly, except when we close the filter pane, we have no indicator whether something is filtered or not. In this video, we create some dynamic color indicators and we build a filter counter directly in the bottom, showing how many filters are active. <laughs> Let's get into it. We are in the dashboard. We can open the filter pane by clicking on the button. If you want to know how to build it, we created it in a previous video. You can check it by clicking on the link in the corner. And when we select something here and then closing the filter pane, you can see that you have no way of telling that the dashboard is filtered or not. So what we want is to show how many slicers are filtered and also when the filter pane is closed, having a color indicator on the button showing that it's active, as well as on a hover, we could show what slicers are filtered. We are going to start with building the active filter counter. We can create a measure for that. Going to enlarge it a bit and let's create a new measure and it's going to be count active filters equals and what we want to see whether the values in these slicers the columns in these slicers are filtered or not for that we can use the is filtered function and for example in the geography slicer we have the geography column and let's see what happens if you use this i'm going to add the card and if you put the count active filters to it, you see that it's false, meaning it's not filtered. And when we select something here, it turns to true. And since we want to count it, we could tell with a condition that if it's true, then it should return one. So counting as one. If it's not true, then it should return zero. So we can put this line into an if function. If is filtered geography is true, then return one otherwise return zero now geography is filtered so the count active filters is true but we want to count all of them what we can do is creating a variable for all these filters and then adding them together at the end so let's put it in a variable where geography equals like that then we can copy it and do the same with gender, select geography. Then if you press Ctrl D, you select the next matching value, and then we can change them at the same time. In the gender, we have the gender column, and let's do this also for the other measures. I put the measure also into this text file, so you can just copy it from there. After we have all these variables, it returns one to all the filtered columns. In another variable, we can add them together. Let's call it filter count equals, and we can just go geography plus gender. You can also copy it from the text file. I'm also going to copy it. And then we can just return this filter count. Let's see what happens. We see we have three slicers selected and it shows three. When we clear the selection, then it shows zero. That's also fine for us. I'm going to keep some selections on. And now we could actually format this card and put it somehow into this button. Let's make it smaller. Go to formatting. We can remove the category label. Let's change the font size to 12 pixels. We can make it even smaller. Then to match the design of the dashboard, we have everywhere these rounded corners. We can go to general effects and the visual border and around the corners as well. But as you can see, we have some rendering issues here. So the card is simply too small to show this value. This is the minimum size you can have and that's too big for us. So instead of putting it into a card, you could actually put it into a button. For that, I'm going to copy this close button here and then go to style and here we have the option to put a conditional text we can put measure as a text so let's click on it and try to select this count active filters but we cannot select it unfortunately 
And the reason for that is that it only accepts a measure with the text output because this is a text. And if you go to the count active filters, you can see that the format is a whole number and we have no option to change it here. But what we can do is to change the number value into a text by adding an ampersand and this empty character. Then you click OK. You see that the format is text now, but we still have the same value. And now if you click on the conditional formatting, churn modeling, now we can add the count active filters and click OK. Then in the font, we can change it to DIN, 12 pixels. And if we turn on the fill, now you can see that it still renders. We can make it even smaller properties. Let's make the size 32 by 32. So it fits very well in the button and we still see the value. And how we want to format it? We want to have an indicative distinguishable color. We can use purple for it. I already selected the hex code. It's going to copy it and go to fill and I'm going to turn it into this purple. They remove the transparency and I'm going to change the font color to white. And when we hover over it or click on it, you see that the color is different. We could change it, but it's not going to be active. So we are not going to be able to interact with it. Let's put it instead of changing it behind the filter button. If you open the selection pane in view, you can just click selection pane and move it below this filter. The filter is the button. We can call it filter counter. And when you deselect it, we cannot click on it now because the button is covering it. And in the button, we can adjust the text to have more space between the number and the text. Go to style. I'm going to left align it. And then at the padding of 28 pixels. It's good so far, but now I'm going to remove the filters and let's see what happens. Well, we still have zero, but we want to de-emphasize it in this case because purple is the indicator that the filter is active. So we can add a dynamic color to it depending on whether the active filter counter equals zero or something else. Let's create a new measure and it's going to be count active filters counter color equals and if the count active filters equals zero but remember that the count active filters returns a text and zero in this format is a number so we have to put it as a text if it equals zero as a text then return a blue color this basic blue color we have I'm just going to copy it like this. And we don't only want to make it blue, but also make it transparent. So we can put a percentage value behind the hex code. And that percentage value is the opacity. If we put here 30% opaque, that means that the color is going to be 70% transparent. And if it's not zero, then we will add this purple color press enter, and then we can select our filter counter and go to style. And we are going to change the fill, fill color, conditional formatting, field values, and look for color. And we can select the count active filter counter colors. So now you can see it's a light blue, very light blue. It's not indicative, it shows zero. And when we select something, it activates and it changes the color. Beyond that, we can also color the button conditionally, depending on whether a filter is active or not. We can make it also purple. For that, we are going to create another measure. Click on data, new measure. And this is going to be count active filters button color equals if count active filters equals zero, then return this blue, otherwise return purple. 
you can find all the measures in this text file so you don't have to write them you can just copy paste them if you want let's see how it looks like I'll select the button go to style and in the default state we are going to change the text color to this measure field values you can add button or type button click ok you see it turned into purple then go to border and we do the same field values button and we can also change the fill give it a purple shade but in this case instead of the cut button color let's use the counter color field value and the reason for that because in the default state when there is no filter selected the counter color is very transparent and what we want that the field color remains transparent when nothing is selected but it's purple when something is selected let's change here the transparency to 85 percent and you see that it has this light shade if i click on clear then it turns into this blue i'm going to select something again and what we want now that on the hover the filling is going to be purple again so let's select the button one more time then let's go to the on hover state the text color can stay white and for the fill color in this case we want to have the same hover effect so we can use the button color not the counter color anymore click ok we can keep the 70 percent transparency and we can use the same button color for the border field value button color then let's go to the on press state we can keep the white font color then for the fill button color again okay we keep the 50 percent transparency and for the border button color again And now when we check it, you see that the interaction has different shades of purple. If we clear the selection, everything is blue. And also on interaction, everything stays blue. I'm going to select something again. And now we have the indicator that the filters are selected. But it would be cool, for example, at Pong Tooltip to also see which slicers are filtered. If you click on the button, and go to action you see that we can add the tooltip but we cannot add the page we can only add a textual tooltip so we could create a measure to list all the active slicers or active filters let's create a new measure let's call it count active filters tooltip equals and here we can use the same logic what we use in the count active filters. We can create a condition for all the slicers, whether they filtered or not. And if they are filtered, they should return the slicer name. Otherwise, they should return nothing. So for example, for geography, it would be if is filtered geography, then return the name of the slicer geography. Other than that return blank, we could just close the parenthesis and the default value is blank. But now I'm going to write it out just to make it clear that we want blank there intentionally. And then we can do it also for the other slicers. But again, you can just copy it from the text file. I'm also going to copy it. And now you can see we have all the eight slicers here returning the name of the slicer. And when we have these values, we want to combine them. We could use the concatenate function, the concatenate x. Let's see, filter list equals and concatenate x. But as you see, it needs a table input. So before that, we have to create a table out of these values. And we can do it very easily if we put the values into curly brackets 
simply just listing them like geography, gender. It's going to create a list, a virtual table out of these values. I'm going to copy it from the text file again, listing all our variables like that. And now when we concatenate this filter list variable filter table equals concatenate X. And now we can type filter list, select filter list. And that's the table and the expression is going to be value. That's the name, the default name of this virtual column within this virtual table of filter list. Then the delimiter is going to be comma and space. And then we can close the parentheses. It's going to sort of ascending by default. After that return, filter table, press enter. And now we can go to our button, actions, and add the tooltip. And we will add the field value tooltip, count active filters tooltip. Click OK. So two filters are selected now when we hover over. We see that credit score and active members are showing. But we see also all these comma values. The reason for that, if you go back to the count active filters tooltip, we have these blank values at every slicer which is not selected. And it also adds, this filter list also adds the blank values into this list. And after that, the concatenate concatenates all the black values and separating them by the commas. So what we want to do is to take this filter list and filter out all the rows where there is a blank value. And we can do it with a filter function. So coming here, I'm going to put the concatenate in another variable where filter label show. Here we are also going to change it to filter label show. I forgot here the equation mark. And here for the filter table, we are going to use the filter function at the filter list. And the value should be not equal to blank. We can close the filter. And also in the return, we can add some more text to it, like active filters equals to this list. And we can also say, put a condition, if the filter label show does not equal blank, so there is a filter selected, then return the filter label show. But if we have no filter selected, then return the text none. Here is active filters and click OK. Let's see how it looks like now. Now we have the active filters tag, but we still see the commas. Mm, let's see why. And this is because here in the filter label show, I forgot to change it to table. Let's click OK again. So when we look at it now, you see that it renders properly. We see only the values we want to see. If we have no selections, then it says active filters now. It's pretty solid, but what if we don't only want to show which slicers are filtered, but show the selected values? We could build a tooltip showing all these values, or we could just show them directly on the dashboard if we have enough space. If you click on the video here, you can see how to build it.